Even mild ear infections are so uncomfortable to deal with. If you have had an ear infection before, you know what I am talking about. It can take a long time to heal and interfere with your sleep. Now imagine what it would be like to have to deal with it for weeks and months at a stretch. Chronic ear infections can significantly impact your quality of life and masquerade as recurring ones. Wondering why this is happening to you in the first place? In today's video, we'll be talking about chronic ear infections in detail. What causes them? What are its symptoms? And the most important, is it possible to prevent them? We'll talk about all of these and more. Stay tuned and watch until the end. Let's begin by understanding what a chronic ear infection is. Ear infections are common among children, but adults are also no strangers to the issue. Luckily for us, most ear infections tend to go away on their own, but sometimes ear infections stay for longer and cause continued discomfort. Such a situation is referred to as chronic ear infections. If the infection returns repeatedly, that is also known as recurring. To understand ear infections, let us first get acquainted with the anatomy of your ear. Your ears have a tube called the eustachian tube to drain fluids from the middle ear. Now imagine what would happen if this tube got plugged for some reason. There will be a buildup of fluid in your middle ear, leading to an infection. The buildup of fluid would also put pressure on your eardrum, which would cause pain. If you ignore the infection, thinking it will go away on its own, the situation could get out of hand. Your eardrum may burst, as you guessed. That's not a pretty picture. Though small holes in the eardrum most often heal, they could cause temporary hearing loss. But ruptured eardrums can lead to permanent damage. Not to mention other problems like drainage, sharp pain, and ringing in the ear, tinnitus. In rare cases, you might even need surgery. Referring back to our statement that ear infections are common among children, have you ever wondered why that is so? The answer lies in the length and shape of the eustachian tube. It is smaller in size and lies more horizontally in children, which makes it a lot easier to get plugged. Looking for answers on all the latest health and wellness news? Hit that subscribe button and join our millions of followers. Stay up to date on all our great bestie content. Can chronic ear infections result in hearing loss? Bacteria can cause a middle ear infection, which exacerbates the inflammation. This bacteria or virus can also result in fluid buildup in the area. As we informed you before, fluid buildup in your middle ear can make you lose your hearing ability temporarily. One of the most common kinds of ear infections is called acute otitis media. This occurs when the eustachian tube becomes inflamed and traps the fluid in your ear. Due to the fluid, you can develop pain and swelling, which has a negative impact on your hearing. The other type of common ear infection is otitis media with effusion. In this case, you will find mucus or fluid in the eustachian tube even after the infection has been treated and cleared. Because of the buildup of fluid, you may not be able to hear properly. There are some not so common types of ear infections as well that can harm your hearing ability. Adhesive otitis media occurs when the eardrum ruptures and the walls of the middle ear are breached. This can happen when the eustachian tube had not been in operation for a long period of time. If you get some complications from acute otitis media, it can result in another infrequent type of infection called chronic suppurative otitis media. This happens when the discharge from the middle ear continues to run because of damage to the eardrum. It usually causes hearing loss, especially in children. Ear infections leading to hearing loss are more likely in children. Experts suggest that about five out of six children will have faced an ear infection before they turn three years old. Symptoms of chronic ear infection. So how do you identify if you have a chronic ear infection? Is time the only answer? As it turns out, there are a few symptoms you can look out for to determine if you have an ear infection. These symptoms can either occur in one ear or both ear. One of the signs of a chronic ear infection is mild pain that doesn't seem to go away. You would also likely feel a lot of pressure in the ear. If there is fluid draining out of your ears for no reason, it could be because of an infection. There is also a chance you will have problems hearing. Along with these signs, you might also have some trouble falling asleep. A mild fever may or may not be present. As adults, 
you might be better equipped to figure out these symptoms. But children and babies won't be able to describe the problem in exact detail. In fact, babies can only cry to signal they're uncomfortable or in pain. You have to look for signs and symptoms to figure out if they do have an infection. For instance, if your child is pulling their ear, it could be because of pain. If they become too irritable for no reason, it could be because they are experiencing discomfort from a chronic ear infection. Your child may also find it difficult to lie down. This would be because of a shift in the fluids in the middle ear. They could also have diarrhea or vomiting as signs of a chronic infection. When the fluid in the ear is imbalanced, it can cause an imbalance in the child as well. They might feel dizzy or move around unsteadily. The more obvious sign of an ear infection would be when they are unable to hear properly. Look for discharge or pus. It could be an indication that your child has an ear infection. Consult a pediatrician immediately. What happens if an ear infection is not treated? Although ear infections tend to go away on their own, that's not the case with chronic issues. If you leave them untreated, they can cause further complications. As we informed you earlier, the most obvious issue would be hearing loss. If you leave the infection untreated, it will cause irreparable damage to the eardrum. But that's not all. Leaving the infection untreated would cause damage to the bones present in your middle ear. You would lose balance because the ears play a key role in that. When the infection causes damage to the eardrums, there can be drainage in your ear. You could face an additional problem, like a cyst in your middle ear. In extreme cases, untreated chronic ear infections can even lead to fatal paralysis. There have been cases where an untreated ear infection caused inflammation in the brain itself. To sum it up, untreated chronic ear infections can cause a lot of damage, which is not just limited to hearing loss. Other probabilities include damage to the bones present in the middle ear, difficulties maintaining balance, cysts, facial paralysis, and inflammation in the brain. A sinus infection can also be the reason for your ear pain. Interested in learning more about it, you can watch our video on the signs and symptoms of a sinus infection. How to treat chronic ear infections. By now, it is clear why chronic ear infections cannot be ignored. Seek treatment from a qualified doctor as soon as possible. Along with treatment, you can also try certain home remedies to help relieve some of the symptoms you face. They are also good for mild ear infections. Let me walk you through some of them. Try warm or cold compress. Ever had a stiff back and found your family or friends suggesting a warm compress? You thought it was useless until you tried it yourself. It is difficult to believe, but strangely, warm or cold compresses can help with pain to a great extent. Both ice packs and a warm compress can ease ear infection pain. Even a damp washcloth or a heating pad can be effective. The best part is that it is harmless and safe for both adults and children. All you need to do is place the compress against the affected ear. You can use these compresses for a few minutes several times every day. Over-the-counter pain relievers. Feeling uncomfortable due to an earache. You can try certain over-the-counter pain relievers such as ibuprofen that can help in cases where the pain is unmanageable. Although most of them are safe to use with or without antibiotics, please confirm before you buy. Are you buying over-the-counter pain relievers for your child? No matter how tempted you are to take matters into your own hands, always consult a pediatrician to find out the right dosage for children. Thankfully, there are several child and infant versions of over-the-counter pain relievers available on the market. A word of caution, though, never give aspirin to children under the age of 16. It's not safe for them. Though effective, pain relievers are not a solution, but just a temporary way to manage pain. You need to treat the root of the pain to make it go away. If the pain persists after three days, you must consult a doctor. The healthcare professional will prescribe antibiotics to treat the infection. If there is a rupture in your eardrum, your doctor would also ask you to take some eardrops to help. Ear drops. Talk about earaches, and you will have at least one person vouch for the therapeutic effects of, natu effects of naturopathic eardrops. They aren't wrong either. Eardrops, made from herbal extracts, mixed with olive oil, as the base are as effective as traditional over-the-counter eardrops in treating ear pain from infection. 
Don't believe us. You don't have to because research backs this claim. Researchers have found naturopathic drops to be effective in relieving ear pain significantly, though it is still not clear whether they can fight off the ear infection as well. But hey, at least they help get rid of ear aches. Your sleeping position matters. You heard that, right? Your sleeping position can help you get relief from ear aches and infections. There are some sleeping positions that can make infections in your ears worse. This means the opposite is also true. For example, you can try sleeping with the affected ear raised instead of facing down toward the pillow. This means that if your right ear has an infection, sleep on your left side. It would help your ear drain better. Does sleeping on your side sound uncomfortable? You can try using extra pillows instead to elevate your head. This also helps drain your ears faster. If that's not an option either, you can opt for a pillow with memory foam. Make sure the pad is of a thickness between four and seven inches. These types of pillows relieve ear aches by providing excellent support and contoured comfort compared to a regular one. Do remember that sleeping on a pillow with the wrong height might worsen your problem. It may cause other health problems such as neck and upper back pain. The memory foam pillow you get should conform to the contours of your head and support your ears as well. You need to get enough sleep at night as it promotes healing. Garlic oil ear drops. Garlic is so popular all over the world, not just for the unique flavor it adds to dishes, but also for its healing properties. No doubt, so many cultures call it the healing spice. People have been using it to treat ear infections and earaches for centuries. This is because it has natural anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties. The antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal properties of garlic come in handy when you apply it topically. Eating it would boost your immune system and help fight the infection. How awesome is that? Science backs these claims. A study involving children dealing with ear pain from middle ear infections found garlic to be surprisingly effective at providing pain relief. They were given naturopathic eardrops containing garlic and other herbal ingredients. It was observed that this was just as effective in managing earaches as over-the-counter eardrops. Another study agreed with this. It found that when used on their own, naturopathic drops containing garlic were more effective than numbing eardrops used to treat ear pain in children. Now the question arises, how do you use garlic to treat earaches and ear infections? Obviously, it is easier to buy garlic oil eardrops from health stores or grocery stores. But in case you have time, maybe try making your own garlic oil at home. All you need to do is soak crushed garlic for several minutes in warm olive oil. If you're allergic to it, use sesame oil. Strain the garlic out and use the remaining oil to treat ear infections and ear aches. A word of caution. You need to make garlic oil eardrops in small batches and use them right away. There's a possibility of bacterial growth in garlic oil under certain conditions, especially if the items haven't been sterilized. Always patch tested on your skin first to rule out any allergies. Never use any of the home remedies if you suspect you have a ruptured eardrum. Surgery. When the infection is not responding to any of the treatments prescribed to you, your doctor may suggest surgery. One method to do this would be by inserting a small tube surgically through the eardrum. This tube would connect the middle ear to the outer ear. By inserting the tubes, the fluids can be drained from the ear. This can reduce the severity of your symptoms and even clear the infection. There are various types of ear surgery depending on the type of infection. If the small bones in your middle ear get infected, you will need surgery to repair them. Then there are times when the eardrums don't heal properly despite medication and good care. Again, the option would be for your doctor to perform surgery to repair the damage. Can you prevent chronic ear infections? Thankfully, preventing ear infections is possible. You just have to be extra vigilant and take action preemptively. We first need to understand why some people are more prone to chronic ear troubles. One of the most common reasons could be a lack of protection from vaccine-preventable diseases. Experts suggest that half of the reasons for chronic middle ear infections are due to bacteria responsible for pneumonia and meningitis, 
Your best bet is to make sure you are up to date on vaccinations for these diseases so that you can also protect yourself from ear infections. It is also important to practice good hygiene. Washing your hands regularly is a good way to avoid all sorts of infections. Stop smoking and avoid getting into situations where you would inhale secondhand smoke. If you do develop an ear infection, make sure you follow up on all your doctor's appointments. It is important for your doctor to monitor the progress so that there is no recurrence of the infection. What are some of the best foods you can eat for healthy ears? Healthy living starts with healthy eating. There's no doubt about that. Just like each internal organ in your body needs nutrition to keep working at its best, your sensory system also needs a proper diet. By sensory system, we mean your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. For example, you must have heard how carrots are great for eyesight since they contain a generous amount of vitamin A. Similarly, there's the best diet for your ears as well. It's just that we always give preference to the health of the eyes and skin over other sensory organs like the ear. So let me suggest a few foods that will definitely help with your ear health. Bananas. The bananas are our number one recommendation thanks to the ample amount of magnesium this fiber-rich fruit offers. But why is magnesium so important for your ear health? Well, a lack of magnesium can cause a number of health challenges, including shrinking of the blood vessels in your inner ear. This will affect the oxygen supply, which can ultimately impair your hearing. Magnesium, found in bananas, helps expand these blood vessels in your inner ears. As a result, there's hassle-free improved blood circulation and oxygen reach. It also helps control glutamate, which is the main reason for hearing loss in many senior adults. Dark chocolate. I bet you're happy to see dark chocolate on our list. To be honest, it does sound like music to my ears. Dark chocolate is rich in zinc, which is great for your immunity. And better immunity means your ears will be protected from infections. Zinc also enhances cell growth, which is again good for your ear health. But before you start munching on chocolates mindlessly, you need to know that not all chocolates are good for you. The majority of them are super loaded with sugar, which is not good for your health in the long run, especially for people with prediabetes and diabetes. Always go for dark chocolates that have a minimum of 70 cocoa in them. And of course, eat in moderation. Fish. Do you love seafood? It seems like you should, especially if you want to prevent hearing loss. Fatty fish rich in omega. Three fatty acids can be a game changer for your health. So many of us are guilty of overlooking omega, three fatty acids and their health benefits. But the truth is, they can play a huge role in keeping your ears functioning properly as you get older. A study examined 100,000 individuals in the United Kingdom to find out the link between blood DHA levels and hearing difficulties. It was discovered that there's an inverse relationship between the two. This means that the higher the DHA levels in your blood, the lower your risk of having to deal with hearing challenges. But how does DHA relate to omega fatty acids? Omega-3 fatty acids are known as docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA for short. So, the next time you're thinking about including some omega-3 fatty acids rich foods in your diet, opt for salmon, sardines, or mackerel, tuna, and anchovies are also good choices. Vegetarians and vegans can try plant-based sources like walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds. You can also include vegetables like Brussels sprouts and spinach in your diet. Nobody wants to deal with ear infections and hearing loss out of the blue. It would serve you well if you knew more about keeping your ears healthy and dealing with ear-related emergencies. Let's keep the conversation going with a couple more videos, shall we? Watch an insect flew into your ear. What should you do next? You can also try our video on 14 daily habits that are harming your ear. Go ahead, click link. Or better yet, watch both and learn more about how your ears work. Have you ever had an ear infection? Let us know in the comments below.